All right, how's it going, folks? I'm Mike with Drone Deer Recovery. This video is going to be a little bit of a different style here in the studio. We're going to be talking about using thermal drones with the EHD crisis that's going on in Ohio, not only Ohio, but uh, the surrounding states. So let's get into it. We had already shot this video in a completely different style than what you guys are seeing currently with me in the studio, but my mood was really down when we got to the location and the reason that we're not producing that video is because i literally was not uh, motivated at all because on our way down there we found out probably like most of you guys that charlie kirk murdered by a leftist i was really angry on the way down i, I was this close of turning around and going home and not doing this because i was just like i i knew that the way i was feeling that the video probably wouldn't come out like i was hoping it would and uh after putting the edit together i was like yeah this is not gonna work and so i'm going to reshoot in the studio like this you know it, it just wasn't what i wanted but uh you know charlie kirk he was a brother in christ i believe in jesus and he did as well and uh to see him you know shot and killed like that really just angered me he stood for a lot of good things yeah like probably most of you guys watching this that's why the video is going to be a little bit different style than what we normally do So getting into, you know, using thermal drones in this EHD situation we got going on in Ohio. I've been he hearing reports on Facebook. I don't go on Facebook much, but guys were talking about this EHD in Ohio. And I was like, yeah, it's probably just, you know, people talking. When something bad happens on social media, it, it tends to be in a way that let people like talking about it. And so I was like, yeah, it's probably not that bad. The more I heard about it, I was like, doggone it. This must be pretty bad with EHD down there. I heard a couple other reports. Austin that's producing the show we'll bring him in here in a little bit talking about it because Austin actually spoke to me about his friends having uh, found a bunch of dead deer on their land as well we're gonna use this technology thermal drones to go down to that area and just kind of do a survey right like let's go down there see how many dead deer or how many live deer because not only are thermal drones good to find carcasses they're good to find deer that are alive and if there's a bunch of deer dead then there's probably not going to be that many alive deer so Madison, he was with me that night. We were down there. Actually, Madison has land that he's been hunting down there for a long time. He has some really good bucks that he's been watching. He's uh, seen them with his thermal drones while they were still alive. Also had tons of trail cam photos of these nice deer that he was watching. And bucks, of course, is what I'm talking about. Madison was watching these uh, shooter bucks uh, for quite a while. And once this started picking up about EHD, he did start getting concerned about maybe losing some deer. And so he took his thermal drone down there and uh, started scanning around earlier, about two weeks prior to us arriving there. And he did see what he didn't want to see was uh, deer were dying uh, left and right. We uh, basically uh, met up with each other and drove down there to go scan this this property for him. But on our way down there, I called Dennis. He's also a thermal drone pilot for us in this area. And uh, I talked to him because he has some friends that have land a little bit further north of where we were going. And they wanted to see, you know, what, what's their deer herd look like. But uh, had a phone call with him. It's pretty interesting what they ended up finding out there with his thermal drone. Hey, Dennis. Me and Madison are headed down south to look for EHD deer. I heard you were down here flying for somebody. How many did you find? 20 some. 20 some dead ones with your thermal drone. Yeah. Jeez. And I could have found more than that. We were kind of specifically looking for one buck that had a couple drop tines and was pretty nice that the guy was like, he was watching him and he wasn't showing up anymore. So we found that one and then dead. didn't look for, yeah, dead, oh. flowing in the creek. No um, way. And you, you found yeah. him with your thermal drone? Oh, yeah, after he's been dead for quite a while. So, um, yeah, it was just uh, his belly was, was sticking up. He was floating, but, like, everything else was underneath. But the water was clear enough where we could immediately see the couple drop tines. No but, way. Well, the weather was really good. It was on Saturday, and it was cloudy all forenoon. Uh, I was early afternoon, and it was still cloudy. But I found deer that there were mostly bones. Okay, so oh, okay. There, there wasn't much left. Like, the bones were sticking out everywhere. And I found deer that were 
looked like they had just died pretty recently. Okay. We saw a couple small bucks, like really small ones, but all the big. That's that's really depressing. Yeah. Jeez. It, it, it was like the the older the more likely to be dead. We did not find one big buck alive, and we found a lot of big bucks dead. Um, like pretty nice bucks, you know, one thirty to one sixty. This is this is not good, Dennis. This is not good for everyone involved. Yeah, it's pretty sad. You know, it, this is not happening just to one or two people. This is happening to a lot of people in that southern portion of Ohio. You know, I'm talking Ohio, but really it's surrounding states. It's Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia. I think you're all feeling this EHD. Now, guys, I'm not a professional in EHD. That's not what I'm here to talk about. And I don't even know how the whole thing works. I actually called Derek from Whitetail Research. Very knowledgeable guy. If you haven't seen it, uh, his footage, make sure to go watch it on his YouTube channel called Whitetail Research it produces some really, really good, interesting content using thermal drones. Anyhow, so me and Madison, we get to his first location. Now, Madison did find a few of his deer dead already, and he just wanted to show me what they looked like when we got there. The conditions were not good for us at all. It was blue skies, sunny. That's not good for thermal. Obviously, thermal, we want to have the ground be cooler and the carcasses be, you know, warmer. That's how you get that thermal contrast difference to know what you're looking at. But we got there. Sun was still up. It was hot out. Madison went to the location where he had already pinned one of his dead deer. It was a big deer. I think he had like three beams. Pretty sad. But he flew over there to show me what that carcass looked like. Took a little bit to find him because the conditions were bad. Not only did we set up in one location, we moved around. We moved around because we wanted to scan bigger areas in that general vicinity, not just one property to see what it looks like. And so the second location we sat up, we moved down closer to a riverbed because really what we've been told about this EHD is deer are going to water. They're wanting to drink of water and then that's where the bug bites them. And they tend to be kind of in the rivers and the creeks and that type of stuff but not all of them there's definitely deer on top of the hills that we found that were dead and in the bottoms but i would say majority of what we found that night were you know down closer to the, those water sources so second location we didn't find much we did find a few deer alive which is a good sign we wanted to find deer alive as well because this is not just about finding dead deer this is wanting to find live deer to know is the herd doing all right because if we go there and you know, we find no live deer because the thermal drones are going to find live deer out in these fields for sure this time of the year. Like at the time we were flying, deer usually move out of the timber and go into these fields. Well, it doesn't take me long. I can just take the thermal drone up and boom, scan a field and know if there's deer out in those fields. We weren't seeing that a lot. Not like what I wanted to see. Yeah, I ended up moving to three different locations at the end of the night. It was starting to become dark and I just didn't want to be there after dark because I'd have to turn on my spotlight to see if it's a carcass or not. I would say that we found probably the same amount of dead deer as live deer. And I definitely did not like that I was not seeing the amount of deer that I would expect to see in those areas in the fields. Like the last location we got to, they had corn, nice corn fields in the trees, like, right? Like you would see deer normally, if they're not all dead, in those areas eating. And we just didn't see that. I was on a CRP field way in the back corner. You could see there, I found two deer in that CRP field, only two. And it just is strange because down in that area, I do get a lot of drone deer recovery calls and I see a ton more deer, or I did see a ton more deer, you know, last season than I'm, what I'm seeing right now. So it's a sad situation. The whole thing is not good. I do think it's going to affect us with drone deer recovery this season, just because of the lack of deer was going to be less calls is what I'm expecting. There's no doubt that this technology is changing the whole industry as far as surveys, analysis, whatever you want to call it, and recovery itself. It's like, not only are they good to find deer that are mortally wounded, they can tell us what the herd health is. That's what we were able to do that night for sure. Austin, I want to bring you in because you had mentioned that your buddy started sending you dead deer. And that's kind of what sparked this. I was like, okay, your buddy is telling you he's found a bunch of dead deer. And so that's when I started thinking like, we should go check this out. How many dead deer did he find down there? Uh, I mean, I think they've found probably 
10 that he sent photos of dead deer, but they're out there finding them all the time. And this is kind of the area that I hunt as well. But I mean, in some of these like hunting land properties, they're, they're predicting anywhere from 70 to 80% kill. Off I believe that. Sudden- I, I believe that just based on what me and Madison were doing that night, once I started seeing, uh, you know, I seen the carcasses, but how little deer were in the fields, that was concerning to me. We were in bean fields. We were in corn fields. Like we were in areas that deer probably should yeah. be. And you're, you're not seeing it. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you fly thermal drones as well. You know how easy it is at evenings yeah. when the sun just goes down. The deer are usually in the fields, yeah, and we were not them, seeing that down there. You can see them a mile away, yeah. you know, in those yep. conditions, yep. in the fields. So, yeah, yeah it, it's really sad. Um, it's just, you, you have not flown that property yet with your no, thermal drone? I have not. I, I wanted to get down there and, and take a look. I'm, I'm more interested now in just kind of seeing what is the overall health yeah. of the herd. Yeah. But yep. you kind of have to wait. They're going to keep dying until we get our first frost. That's what I hear. You know, the, yeah. the frost is going to be what's going to actually start reducing that rate. So it's just like we need a good hard frost. But then I just want to be able to go down there and manage and see what the actual herd health looks yeah. I, like. Yeah, I was then, uh, listening to the Hunter podcast, uh, and they're talking about EHD and how it works. Like I told you guys, I'm not a professional on this. I would call myself a professional on the thermal drone side. I'm just not the professional on this, the disease itself. You said you did some research on how this stuff actually works or? Well, I mean, I was just looking at it because so it takes typically a deer will be the incubation period for that virus to develop is like around so seven, it's a virus seven yeah it's a, it's a virus once the deer is infected with it it will die within one to three days the medical terminology for that is like it is a dead end host so i'm like how does this even get started because oh. if a deer is infected for just that short period of time like how does it keep getting past law or how does it even get started yeah so i the one of the things that i was looking at was these midgets can get blown in for up to midget yeah it's Uh, it's i don't think i was calling a midget i guess it's called a midge and then and a midge and then midge Midge. it's hard to say yeah yep yeah so this little some just call them gnats yeah as well it's best whatever yeah this uh little bug can be blown in from areas up to 10 miles so that helps like be able to spread but they don't they're not born with the virus they actually have to bite another infected animal in order to spread it uh, huh. it doesn't come from water the reservoir whatever it comes wait I, w- from, I was told they're a larvae stage they grow and hatch in the water yeah the the gnats do but they're not all infected with the virus so they have to bite they feed on an animal that's already infected and then they go oh, feed on another animal okay, okay. and that's how they infect oh, the okay. other animal and you probably find and, this stuff interesting since you're an rn and, well yeah and, it's it's interesting because it's like if a deer dies in three days how does this even get started but i've been learning a little bit too that cattle can have it as yeah well. but they're just not as susceptible they're right? not as susceptible but and and they can go weeks with it without showing symptoms oh. but if a gnat bites that cow it can carry it over oh, to, to the deer, deer. Okay. and then it will make it okay it will hmm. it will infect them that way i think it's crazy how fast it spread down in that area like oh my goodness dude in no yeah. time like yeah. it felt like all the deer were dead yeah. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's not over yet. Yeah. Like that, the one deer that I found in the CRP, it was a doe bedded down. It was the only deer I found that was bedded at that time of the night. And all the others were up browsing and feeding. And I looked at that deer and I was like, you, you know, Austin, how you are when you, you find a deer that's hit and its ears are a little droop yeah. because mm-hmm. it's, it's in pain or whatever. I felt like that's what this doe looked like. I don't know for sure. I could have stayed there, right, and drop a pin on her and see if I can find her later. But I feel like that deer was sick, but there's literally nothing you can do yeah. about it. And there's nothing it can do about it itself yeah. either because, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it's doomed at that yeah. point. The reason you find them oftentimes beside water is because they actually produce a fever and so they're going to water sources to cool down okay so some may have worse cases of it and and have a higher fever which is going to cause that deer to go to yeah. sources where they can cool down it's just so sad because a lot of the guys you know that i've hunted with and we've worked really hard at managing 
you know, being careful with the deer we're shooting and stuff. Yeah. And now it's like you wipe out your total population. It's going to take five years You know years what we'll to, be able to, to do, Austin, up. once the leaves drop? I think this is what we should do. We should go down there and do a herd census, right? Yeah. We should go there and there's plenty of property owners there that are willing to have you fly across their property with thermal drones and get a good count of what the, the herd looks yeah. like. Because we were out there the other night with, with how the leaves are, it, it's so difficult to, to go penetrate down yeah. through the tree canopy right now. So once those leaves drop off, maybe we coordinate a, a huge herd census. Obviously we know how to do that. Yeah. You uh, you coordinate it, was it over 6,000 acres that we did yeah. with mm-hmm. the herd census? And a lot of guys read reached out to us and they wanted to know how we do these large scale uh, herd census. You know, maybe we could coordinate something like that. And I guess uh, we could tell them at this point, we do have that herd census course that's available if somebody wants to learn. We have a course that I think is over 25 videos in that course, just kind of helping you from the start, how to talk to your clients, giving you actual resources. Like there's a pretty neat calculator in there that helps you build quotes. And it's, there's so many variables it's pretty extensive, but there's a video showing you how to use that calculator so that you can kind of figure out how to price a piece of property uh, for doing a herd census. There, yeah. So th- we have certificates that you can modify and print off. We have handouts that you can print. You can easily edit them to make them your own. So we want to help. It's not just learning how to do the herd census, but it's also some tools in there to help you like market and yeah. appear more professional yeah. kind of stand that, out. That's a big thing. I don't talk about it much on the Drone Deer Recovery channel, but the amount of people that are calling us to that want herd censuses done at the end of the season, it's there's a big market for it. But I think most of the guys that were getting started is they didn't know how to market, how to present you know, how to present their data yeah. that once they do get the data, how do I give it to the customer and look professional? And so that course I mean, really I, and, lays it out. And I had a guy, so the most acres that I had anybody talk to me about is like, hey, I've got a contract that I could potentially get for 90,000 acres. That's a huge project. That's a huge project. Yeah. How do I go about doing yeah. this? And this is kind of what spurred on some of how do you get multiple pilots together, you know, six, seven, eight pilots together how are you confident in your numbers when you have that large of a project? And so that course kind of goes through nice. all of that. Yeah. Nice. Shameless plug there for the Her Census course. I, I mean, it just works while we're talking about, you know, these deer as a whole down in that Southern Ohio is what's the deer herd's health. And so I think once the leaves are off, we're, we'll just go down there and we'll do a herd census with a, a bunch of guys and see, see what it looks like. But you know, like Austin said, the whole situation, it actually is bad. I do believe that the deer will bounce back. It's going to take, in my opinion, I don't know, right? Not a professional. Again, I would say three to five years, they might be back to where they were before, but uh, we'll find out. We will probably go down there and do her census for customers and just do our own study to see what it looks like. But There you go. Using thermal drones to scan the area, survey the area, looking for EHD deer. It totally works. It does give you a better idea of what deer are still alive, but that's no guarantee as we're still not out of the the situation we're in. Like we said, we need to get a hard frost. And so the deer that we found the other night that were still alive, dude, they could be dead by now because it's been over a week. So Only time will tell how bad it actually is, but there you go. Using thermal drones to find EHD deer. That's all I got for you guys. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's a little bit different uh, type of video. Let us know if you like it. If you do, we will do more of these studio type videos. I appreciate the support. We'll see you guys on the next one.